All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. Click that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. What have we got today? What's in the bag? Well, this is an Allen bag. This is really designed for holding firearms in, but I like to use these for my knives too. It keeps them from getting banged up in the safe. If you clicked on the title of this video, or if you saw the title, you probably know what this is. But we have got a classic, a Randall Model 18. Look at all this paracord and stuff on these sheets, I tell you. But you know, this is, a lot of times people will look at all this stuff and these Randalls like, man, what do they have all these different things for? They actually all have a purpose, which I don't know what they are. But I believe this one is used for next to retention, or maybe it's this one is is put on there for next to retention. You can pull it up through these strings. I don't know for sure. I'm sure some random guy on here could probably do a video and tell more about what those things are. But yeah, the Model 18. This is their classic hollow handle survival knife. Now this one, the knife itself, I'm wanting to say is probably from late 80s, early mid 90s, sometime in there. The sheath is not original for this. Uh, this is actually a Model 14 sheath, I believe. And I deduce that because of the fact that it says NASA on it. And I believe it's the Model 14. Gosh, if I'm wrong on that, you can random guys are gonna chew me up. I believe it's the Model 14 is the Astro, is the knife that they originally designed for the uh, astronauts back when they were doing the, um, you know, the right stuff, the Apollo astronauts back in the 50s, 60s. And it has the same blade, kind of the same blade profile. So they, sh they share the same sheath, the Model 14 and the Model 18s too. So what became about of this? You know, really there's not a lot on the Model 18 that I can find in history, to be honest with you. Uh, it just, a lot of people acknowledge, hey, you know what, it came about in the uh, early Vietnam stages. Um, there was a guy, let me see, what was his name? The name I found is that a Captain George Ingram with the 94th Medical, Medical Detachment in Vietnam approached Bo Randall, sent him a letter, this was in 1963, and he was talking about, uh, hey, you know what, we need to do, I, it'd be great if you guys could do a hollow handle survival knife of some sort. And one thing led to another, they started developing it, and yeah, they came out with this in 1964. Now what's interesting about these is that the earlier ones did not have this little threaded butt cap attachment on it. We'll show this in a minute. The earlier ones actually had, they call them, it was a crutch tip because it was a, like a rubber tip that you put on the end of a crutch that fit over this and was just held on by friction. Uh, they did it like that, I think until 1973, I'm wanting to say, is when they started threading on the caps. Um, and again, I'm sure some random guy will correct me if I'm wrong on that. There are some Randall nuts out there that know every little bit of things about these, and I just know that they're pretty knives and they're good knives. So yeah, so let's take a look at it real quick. This particular one is a five and a half inch blade and is not stainless. As you can see, it looks like at some point, maybe a little bit of corrosion or something set in right there. The camera sure makes that spot look a lot worse than it does. But I'm a user too. I believe in using my Randalls and I think I have used this one once or twice for a couple of small tasks. But as you see, it's a good all-purpose, kind of like a drop point type blade. The back half right here is sharpened and you can see that it has some saw teeth on it. Those will work for wood to some extent, you know, but really this is designed for sawing through um, the aircraft, like the skin on an aircraft or maybe the Lexan uh, windshield or something like that on an aircraft. It's designed to help you get out if you need to. Big brass guard, and you can see that it is silver soldered. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that for y'all. You can see the blade is silver soldered in place with the guard. Now the earlier ones, 
instead of knurling on the brass cap, they actually had a series of vertical lines in it. That's one way you can kind of date the earlier ones, like probably between 73 and um, I think 80s or 90s is when they started using the knurling on these. And it's actually a pretty fine threaded cap. Much finer thread than my Buckmaster cap. I think what the problem was, I seem to remember reading on the forums, I don't know who posted it, but the problem was in the beginning, the handle material they used was not thick enough to, to be able to be threaded, internally threaded. So eventually they went in with went with a little bit thicker handle. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Let me see if I have a light handy here. Yeah, here we go. There we go. See that down in there? That's epoxy. I think it's just a simple matter of the blade having a tang that's threaded. They put a nut on it, tension it down, and then they fill it up with epoxy so you don't have to worry about the nut ever coming, uh, coming undone. Very similar construction to the, um, to the Buckmaster. But this came out, of course, a long time before the Buckmaster. I might be wrong on that. Maybe there is no nut. I don't know for sure, but I know it does look like epoxy down in there. The, the cap is brass, and it's a hefty little piece. Now, one of the options they offer with this one, which this one does not have, I wish it did, is they will put a compass inside of here. The bad part is, is just about everybody acknowledges the compasses are not real accurate that go on these handles. Another option, they really only have, I believe, just three options on these things nowadays. And, of course, you can still order these, you know, brand new. Um, one option is the compass in the handle, in the butt cap. A second one is you can get these with a knurled handle versus a smooth handle like this one. And I'll try to drop in a picture right here of a knurled handle version so you can see what it looks like. The third option would be a stainless blade, which honestly, I do wish this one kind of had. I kind of wish this one had it, you know, in a survival knife. I think a stainless blade is a huge, is, is a big asset. Now, of course, a lot of the knife junkies and stuff like that be like oh no you don't want stainless it's harder to, you know it's it doesn't hold the edge near as well and stuff like that well you know what <laughs> for years guys 440c was the knife choice this is not their randall uses i think 440b for their stainless but um for years you know the world got by i know it's hard to believe through a couple of war wars and a lot of other conflicts and stuff like that with knife blades that were made out of 440c or 1095 carbon guys knew how to sharpen their knives then <laughs> that's all there is to it i you know yeah you know what some of the new super steels like crew wear crew max whatever it is you know s30 s35 and stuff is great but man that stuff is a pain in the butt to sharpen sometimes so uh i'm all old school in that regard and i i appreciate 1095 and like 440c 44b stainless but um now, the other option, I'm trying to think of the options they have. They do have this, and I believe it's a seven and a half inch blade. Uh, yeah, seven and a half or five and a half. This particular one is a five and a half inch blade. But you can get it in a seven and a half inch blade. And that's it, y'all. I wanted one of these for a, a long time, uh, about as long as I wanted a... A Buckmaster, and if you haven't seen my Buckmaster video, check it out. You know, that tells you my story of my quest for a Buckmaster and finally getting one when I'm in my 50s. But uh, I guess it's better to get one in your 50s than not at all, right? I haven't used this one much. I think I won't hesitate to use it next time I cook. Okay, matter of fact, I think I'll be in Big Ben here in the next month or two doing some camping. I might take this one with me. Or I might take my Model 27 Classic Stag Handle one. I need to do a video on that, too. One last thing. You guys know I like to do this. Let's go ahead and take a weight on this bad boy. They're hefty. They're chunks. They're chunks of steel and brass. Make sure my scale is accurate. 17.6 ounces, that's 500 grams. The knife by itself, 14 ounces. 
and let's put the sheath on there. Do this without making a mess. 20.8 ounces. It's not something lightweight banging around on your hip all day, but with that heft comes reliability. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.